Hi, welcome. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, Professor of Pathology at the University of Oklahoma. And I'd like to share with you a very interesting uh, and challenging case from which I learned some uh, interesting uh, things. Um, sometimes it's the exceptional cases where you make a mistake or are misled that uh, help you to learn the most. And this was one such case. So the patient is a 69-year-old uh, woman. Um, and she has been having a little bit of uh, postmenopausal bleeding and ultrasound exams seem to indicate that there was a mass type lesion or thickening of her endometrial stripe that led the uh, clinicians to think that she might have a carcinoma. Um, the uh, biopsies were non-productive, uh, only yielding sort of a scant fibrous tissue and sort of a stenotic uh, cervical canal. And so, uh, they opted to go ahead and do uh, hysterectomy, uh, at which time they would uh, perform frozen section evaluation to determine what kind of staging might be needed. And so that's the first slide that I'm going to uh, share with you is uh, what we had on frozen section. Uh, here's a scan of that slide. And as you can see, there's a mass-like lesion. And this was present on just one wall of the uh, myometrium. And it seemed to be invading into uh, the uh, stroma of the, uh, of the wall, uh, as you can see here. And there seems to be areas of uh, necrosis and uh, some additional uh, calcifications that are present here, as you can see here and up in here. Now there's a variable uh, pattern of uh, pink areas and some blue areas, which you might think would suggest uh, you know, a biphasic neoplasm or something. But as we look at this, uh, the pink tissue is all uh, pale. Uh, it's kind of necrotic looking. And this intervening tissue looks to be more granulation type tissue uh, or a few uh, residual uh, vessels and so forth. So uh, looking at the margins, we didn't see anything that looked to be uh, identifiable as a tumor. And so we started uh, looking into the uh, necrotic tissue. Sometimes uh, these, this can be productive and sometimes you can get misled. Uh, but as we looked at this, we wondered if there might be some cellular tissue here. We wondered about necrotic ghosts or other uh, cell uh, findings that might be uh, uh, indicative of a uh, cellular tumor. Um, uh, but we were unable to really substantiate that diagnosis. And so we said, uh, you know, this is a uh, probably malignant neoplasm based on the invasive uh, pattern that we see here. Um, and uh, we wondered about the possibility of a stromal neoplasm because of its uh, uh, pattern. Um, and we would defer any further diagnosis to permanent sections. So that was our evaluation uh, at that time. And uh, with uh, that, uh, we went on to the, the permanent section evaluation, uh, which I think I can show you here. So here we see uh, a little bit better uh, what's going on. Uh, we see this uh, sort of uh, vaguely nodular pattern uh, that seems to be expressed around some of the vessels. And again, this uh, surface necrosis and everywhere else uh, is this uh, very hyaline eosinophilic uh, uh, appearance. Uh, after extensive sectioning, we could detect no evidence of any uh, tumor. And as we looked at the pattern of this nodular extension into the myometrium, uh, it struck us that this was in reality a residual placental site nodule, uh, perhaps of an exaggerated uh, placental site, but no residual uh, uh, germinative or uh, gestational type tissue was present here. Now, you may ask, how in the world can uh, you make the diagnosis of uh, a uh, pregnancy-related uh, entity uh, in a woman who is uh, probably three or four decades from her last childbirth? And that's a very good question. Um, but the truth is, is that these uh, placental site nodules, which tend to be very hyalinized eosinophilic masses, 
uh, can persist very long after uh, the, the uh, pregnancy is passed uh, and long after child rearing. These are essentially scar tissue uh, that uh, persist um, as evidence of a healed response. Um, and there's not normal endometrium uh, associated with them. Occasionally, uh, you'll see them in, uh, uh, with a little bit of surface uh, endometrial type lining, but as uh, circulation or other issues uh, wane into uh, mature years, these can become uh, quite hyalinized. And as you see here in this case, uh, the surface can begin to become necrotic. Um, we don't know if there was a specific uh, event in her life that led to this sort of hypotensive, perhaps necrosis due to the hyalinization here, uh, but that may well have been uh, an uh, part, of the, part of the process as well. So this is uh, a, a very instructive case about a, an exaggerated placental site nodule um, that has persisted uh, well into the uh, postmenopausal uh, era uh, and uh, therefore would represent no threat to her uh, uh, longevity or outcome, no need for further therapy, um, and certainly a lesson to be learned uh, from the frozen section evaluation as well. So uh, that's uh, the case uh, for today. Uh, a very uh, instructive case for me and something that I learned from, and I hope that it'll help you as well. Uh, we'll try to show some additional examples of uh, placental site nodules that are perhaps less uh, florid and less uh, uh, prolonged in their uh, presentation. Uh, but I think this uh, case uh, has uh, all of the features needed to make that diagnosis. Uh, and uh, once we've ruled out the malignant possibilities, uh, uh, we felt very confident in that. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me. We do hope that you'll subscribe so that you can catch uh, future releases from our channel. And that if you have comments, you'll reach out to us either directly or uh, in the comments below. So until next time, thanks a lot.